It's time for Supply Chain Now Radio, broadcasting live from the supply chain capital of the country, Atlanta, Georgia. Supply Chain Now Radio spotlights the best in all things supply chain, the people, the technologies, the best practices, and the critical issues of the day. And now, here are your hosts. Hey, good afternoon. Scott Luton here with you live on Supply Chain Now. Welcome back to the show. We're broadcasting live today from Modex, the largest supply chain trade show in all of the Western Hemisphere, as our dear friend Ben Harris says. And it's Mm -hmm. being held right here in the supply chain city, Atlanta, GA. Today's show, we are speaking with a supply chain technology leader where we're going to be talking all about redefining asset tracking. Uh, So stay tuned as we look to increase your supply chain tech IQ. Uh, only a quick programming note before we get started here. You can subscribe to Supply Chain Now wherever you get your podcast from. Uh, you know, you don't want to miss anything, which is why most people subscribe, right? I've heard that, yes. <laughs> Including yeah. Greg's favorite channel, which is? YouTube. That's right, as always. Um, so I want to welcome in our fearless co-host here today in today's show, Greg White, serial supply chain tech entrepreneur, trusted advisor, supply chain savant. Whoa. Say that right? Savant. Is that yeah. French? Uh, and Atlanta City Club Tennis Champion. Did you see that coming? I did not see that coming. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. It was a team effort. That's first right. Of all. Let's, let's did you get a parking spot credit or a to locker? The team. Yeah, neither one. I got a plate. <laughs> I did. I got a plate. I should, should have brought it in. That's right. Well, I think we're in tune for a uh, uh, great show here today. Uh, we've really enjoyed our pre-show conversations with the Call Pass team. And today we welcome in Jason Ashton, president of the Call Pass organization. Jason, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How about yourselves? We are doing fantastic. Yeah. We've had a great day. This is day two of Modex. Um, resurgence. There's a lot more people here today, which is great to see, despite the rain here yeah. in Atlanta, right? Well, they had to get inside. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, come on, man. People uh, want to get inside when it rains here. Well, in, you know, as we've all seen, it's like a supply chain circus around here. The drones and the robots and the technology and the best practices and thought leadership that we're going to hear from folks like Jason Ashton here today. It's, it's captivating. If you love all things supply chain, this is the place to be. So, uh, Jason, let's, before we ask you where you um, grew up because mm-hmm. we're going to kind of learn more about you. Sure. Where did you come into the show from? Uh, I live in Tampa, Florida. Okay. Our corporate offices are in Clearwater, Florida. Okay. Nice. So about twenty minutes over the bridge from Tampa. Where okay. else would a kid from Connecticut live? But Florida. It's logical. Right. It's a transition. You go down <laughs> right. for spring break you and you never leave. Yeah. You yeah. just did it before you retired. Right. Right. Yeah. Smart. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jason, now we're going to get into because you you, you kind of teased us a little bit for right before we went live in mm-hmm. terms of where you're from. So. Tell us about where you grew up, and you got to give us an anecdote or a story or two about your upbringing. Okay. Um, so, born and raised in Naugatuck, Connecticut, okay. small town outside of uh, Waterbury. Um, I think your biggest city references are going to be Hartford and New Haven, yep. uh, 30 minutes um, west of Hartford and uh, 25 minutes east of New Haven. Okay. Um, Naugatuck, at one point in time, was the rubber capital of the world, Uniroyal headquarters. All right. As a okay. result, as a result, the Naugatuck River was, when I was growing up, one of the most polluted rivers in the country. Is that right? Um, and if you like, if you guys watched The Simpsons, yeah, um, back in the day, um, the three-eyed fish I believe we had a handful of those in the backyard. <laughs> so that's a little anecdote about. Are they Naugatuck. harder or easier <laughs> to catch? Um, <laughs> they catch you. Is they that see, right? Yeah. yeah, they actually see you coming. For some yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so <laughs> the pride of Naugatuck, uh, Connecticut. All right, so. Uh, Moving forward, mm-hmm. uh, let's talk about education. Sure. Give us, you know, where'd you go to school or, <laughs> or give it. us a story. <laughs> give us a story about education before you jumped into your professional journey. Uh, sure. I mean, uh, graduated high school from Naugatuck High School and uh, went on to go to Springfield College. Okay. All right. Um, I was a recreation management major, so it's okay. a natural transition in the technology. <laughs> Political science. <laughs> did you play right. sports? You look like a baseball player. I, I did. I did. I was a, a four-sport athlete in high school. I played football, basketball, baseball, and track. I was captain of the basketball team, um, and I went on to play college football. Uh, at okay. the time, Springfield, when I played 92-96, uh, to 96, we were Division two. Wow, cool. Um, so I played receiver. Um, had the fortunate uh, uh, fortunate 
ending of a career my junior year when I cracked my L4 and L5. Uh, um, the career wasn't going anywhere, but uh, yeah. it was fun catching balls for a while. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, and then you had an excuse not to. Exactly. One, right? Yeah, I gave it a shot to come back senior year. just really wasn't not worth feeling it. it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. They didn't really pay you at that college for I didn't, some reason. I don't understand <laughs> that. Yeah. Yeah. They got to get with the times. <laughs> um, all right, so Jason, w- w- uh, out of the four sports you played, yep. is there one that you still play today for fun? Uh, I don't. Uh, re- I've had enough injuries that mm. uh, you know, in my advanced, obvious advanced age, um, <laughs> I try to stay away from injuries <laughs> as much as possible. Okay. If I could, um, I would be playing basketball on a regular basis. Um, when I find myself at the gym, I. I'm in between sets, and I can see myself just staring at the court going, why? Yeah. Um, so, but I, I do play some golf now. Um, okay. That's good. It's All right. good to get it's out. It's good for your back. Yeah. And stress. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's talk your professional journey now. Uh, currently, your current role is president, call pass. There's some really interesting developments we'll touch on here momentarily about that company. But, you know, we hear a lot of uh, feedback from viewers, especially when we sit down with leaders and the presidents and CEOs of organizations, mm-hmm. they want to gather kind of a sense of how you got to where you are. You know, from a four-star mm-hmm. all-star athlete to president of a, of a growing technology firm. Mm-hmm. So kind of fill in the dots a little bit, especially with, with critical roles. Yeah, so it, it definitely wasn't a straight line and it certainly wasn't something I grew up with saying, hey, I can't wait to be the leader of a technology company. And I mean, again, again High school in the late 80s, early 90s, into college. I mean, when I was in school, the, the Internet wasn't a thing. Mm. Um, uh, you know, going to the computer lab was really just going to work on a brother. Oregon Trail. Right, yeah, yeah you're just running your reports. Um, yeah. so, so tech wasn't a thing for me when I was growing up. Um, like I said, I was a recreation management major. I had the, the vision that I wanted my life's journey to be, you know, working in resorts, putting on activities, and just having an overall good time. Um, when I got out of college i got offered an opportunity to work for the tampa bay buccaneers in a sales role really um yeah 1997 selling we, seats and boxes. selling seats club seats etc yeah awesome. so i was part of their first outbound sales team and i was like huh this sales thing makes sense all right and um so sell something get a check yes it does so, make sense sell more, it? Yeah. Get, get bigger, a bigger checks, checks. Right. yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah. that that thirty five thousand dollar dream i had um got bigger yeah so. there you go <laughs> So that's how I got my feet wet in sales, and uh, from there I went on to, um, which is probably the most pivotal role I had, um, was going into payroll sales, uh, which, again, not something you wake up going, can't wait to be in payroll sales. But what it did was it really opened my eyes to the businesses around you that you're not aware of and how Mm. people are generating revenue and making money, and you're signing them up for a simple service, and they're telling you, you know, hey, what do you do? Wow, never heard of that, or Mm -hmm. wow, this is really interesting. And it really... That was the the stepping stone into my technology ventures. Um, we I, I signed up a group who was running a software company um, with a suite of services to integrate um, supply chain, if you will, um, mainly from a sales, accounting, and um, overall inventory management mm-hmm. system. Okay. So we signed them up. I had a great conversation. They called me back two days later to the office. I thought they had a problem with their payroll service. And come to find out, they wanted to recruit me to become the head of uh, business development. No. Mm. So I was like, sure. Always um, an ulterior motive, right? Right. right. So this makes <laughs> sense. Um, so I, I actually took the opportunity. And within my first six months, we integrated the platform with At Roads. If you guys remember At Roads mm. back in 2001. Okay. All right. Um, them and WebTech Wireless were probably the first commercial GPS okay. uh, platforms. That's Interesting. When, that's when devices were good and bulky. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know, five, six hundred dollar mm, giant yeah. pieces of five, metal. Five, six hundred pounds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, they were it a weapon. felt like it. Right. Yeah. Um, so that was my first, uh, you know, I, I remember I, to this day I can remember going home and telling my mother I got this great job. We're working with these GPS companies. And she's like, GP what? <laughs> Right, there were no there were no smartphones right. or anything along those lines. No so, Tom turkeys or anything. Yeah, yeah. So that I think that was the most pivotal role I had because it 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 really got me immersed in software, right? Software platform sales, and then the evolution of that technology with the GPS ad mm. really piqued my interest. And mm. I, you know, I didn't have a career path from there, um, other than going just continuing my software sales journey. A um, couple guys that I knew had uh, owned a finance company, and they started a company called CallPass Tech. 
and it was going to be a GPS supply company okay. specifically for subprime auto finance vehicles. Mm -hmm. All right. So loose translation, <laughs> buy here, pay here, vehicle tracking. Repo easy. Gotcha. Correct. Yeah. Right. Insert device, protect collateral. Right. Um, through conversation and through my experience and that little stop off I had in the software slash GPS world, um, I guess that qualified me to. Uh, it's about all it takes. Yeah. <laughs> to, to take control of a startup company. So yeah. I was very fortunate for the opportunity back in 2008, and uh, this is where we are, are today. Yeah. And you've come wow. a long way since 2008. We really have. Here. We really have. All right, so before, uh, I want to make sure we're on the same page here. So the company, what the, what does the company do today? You kind of gave sure. some, some background into the, maybe the genesis, but what does it do yeah. today? So we have two companies today. Call Pass Tech is still the parent company. Um, in 2013, we spun off a subsidiary, Call Pass MDEM Solutions. Okay. And the MDEM Solutions company is wholly designed around asset tracking. So we designed a platform to integrate with a multitude of different device types mm -hmm. and track a variety of, of assets. All right. We didn't get into it to be a fleet tracking company or we're going to track trucks or we're going to track service vehicles. We, we looked at it and said, we can do that. We can do the dots on a map. We want to start getting into what's behind the truck, what's, mm -hmm. what's on the chassis, machinery, right, equipment. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, we've been focused on that since 2013, really taking the platform to new levels, mm. integrating with other not only GPS devices but sensor technology. Um, we're, you know, partnered with, you know, AT&T and Verizon. Um, so we, we've got the telecom side, mm. um, but we're really starting to get into more Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, um, investigating LoRa networks, things like that. Mm. Wow. And so you do the physical devices as well as the technology or So we, we supply both. So, so we're an end-to-end -end solution, right? Yep. And again, um, our I Gotcha platform, which is buy here, pay here, right? Um, we've been doing that since 2008. Okay, uh, and you're still doing that we're today. We're still doing that so, today, okay. yeah. So, I mean, uh, we, we finished last year. I think we deployed 81,000 units. 81,000 yeah. units. Yeah, that's pretty much uh, the, the last five-year run rate. It, it's between 80 and 90. Okay. All right. All right. Um, mm. That's how many, well, I mean, the, of your customers, that's how many yeah, buy so, here, pay here cars. Yeah, so I got sold. about 6,000 buy here, pay here dealers or finance companies that are still utilizing our service to some degree. They got might it. not be active customers, but we're still mm -hmm. servicing their, their devices. Got it. And got if, it. You, if you take both platforms, our, our um, asset tracking platform is an acronym. It's LANA. Okay. All right? So L A N A L A N A. Okay. All right. Like um, Lana Turner. Like Lana Turner. Yeah. yeah we, and we tried to use her like likeliness um, for the logo. It didn't work. Um, <laughs> she, <laughs> <laughs> Her children didn't appreciate yeah. that like they should, right? Yeah. So if you, if you look at both platforms, uh, we, we... Lana is watching. Yeah. Go make your payment. We have deployed over 8,000 units on both platforms. Okay. 800,000 units on both 800,000. Wow. 800,000, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Wow. 8,000 8, sounded good a couple years ago. <laughs> 8, wow. zero, zero, comma, zero, yeah. zero, zero. Gotcha. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Um, well, so, you know, the walking through the hall. You know, I, th I think yeah. he's described a lot of it, but there's probably um, – it sounds like you, you've got a core to your business, mm -hmm. but there's lots of peripheral problems that it sounds like call pass. Yeah, this, this is my favorite question is, is – and I think I, I tipped my hand a little bit earlier, sure. but if I'm, you know, walking down one of these walkways or through the halls in my business, mm -hmm. what is the pain that I'm feeling? What are the key words going through my mind mm -hmm. that, that would have me go, oh, my gosh, I need to call – Call pass. Call pass. Yep. Right? Yeah. So what what is the problem that you solve there? The I think the number one thing we do when it comes to asset tracking is solve the utilization problem. All right. Um, what we find when we're talking to our customers and potential customers is the the term high value asset can run across a myriad of different products, right? right? Or machinery, equipment, whatever the case may be. Whatever, yeah. Right. And what happens is you, you have this turn rate. And the turn rate is tied directly to profitability, all right? And if you're not profitable, you can always go back and say it's because X, Y, Z wasn't where it was supposed to be. Or if X, Y, Z was where it was supposed to be, it's generating revenue. Yep. And if you go back, and you guys have been in supply chain for a long time, just go back to the initial fleet tracking aspect of things. Dots on a map. I want to know where my vehicle is. Yep. And then that evolves to we can get some diagnostic information off of this so we can actually start – you know, being more efficient with our fuel and our tires and everything. Well, the assets kind of got left behind. 
right? And I'll, I'll use an example. Uh, we do a lot with uh, scrap and recycling companies, all right? Those bins, all right? Oh, yeah. GPS technology, there is always that aspect to it from an asset standpoint of, hey, what happens if it gets stolen? Mm. Hey, what happens if it's lost, yep. right? And then the ROI was the, the simple math of, hey, that cost $10,000 to build. You have 100 of them. Therefore, you have X on the books, right? Mm-hmm. If I put this device on it, I'm going to protect you from the loss. Yep. We like to approach it slightly different, right? Yes, that has value to it. It costs you $10,000. But that's supposed to be on a job site Monday through Friday. And it's supposed to be generating revenue, mm. all right? And even if it's $1,000 a week, all right? Yeah. Well, at the end of a year, that's 52000 in revenue. Now you have 100 of those, mm. all right? How many were on their job site 100% of the time, mm. all right? So if you're walking down the hall and you have that problem, utilization is typically the number one problem we solve. You know why to call call pass now? Because it's crystal clear to me. Go ahead. So, <laughs> No, I, I think he just laid it out. Yeah, no, I get it. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so let's uh, – I want to dive a little bit deeper. So so I am by no means the asset tracking expert. So we're going to pick your brain a little bit more yeah. on that that specific topic. Before we do, one of our favorite questions as we sit down with these senior leaders, presidents, and CEOs is where does it, where do you spend your time, Jason? Because like a lot of folks make assumptions, right? Yeah, I mean everybody thinks the president is a job. Yep. But president – could be a multitude of jobs with a multitude of specialties depending on what your gifts are and mm-hmm. then your team's gifts. Mm-hmm. So what do you what do you spend your day doing? Don't you dare say playing golf. <laughs> I wish I'd be <laughs> great. <laughs> <laughs> I spend a lot of time in the office. Um, I really do. I most of my time it's it's around planning, implementation, training, mm-hmm. rinse and repeat. Yeah. All right? Mm-hmm. Um, we got a we got a great staff, we're a growing company. Um, we just crossed the 45 employee mark. Okay. All right. So we're still a small operation, but all big companies start small. Yeah. Small, robust, nimble. Nimble. All yeah. All the, the above. And yeah. it, we, you know, we, we've got massive partners and you see how quickly you, or how nimble you really are when decisions can get made like that. Yes. Um, but I, I spend a majority of my time to just, you know, rinsing and repeating the strategic mm. vision, making sure everybody is trained properly and we can implement and go to market. Mm. Love it. Okay. How, how many folks out of curiosity, in the Tampa office? I mean, we talk a lot about remote uh, enterprises these days, yeah, right? Yeah. So. Um, I'd say out of the 40, we have 46. I'm going to go with 39 or wow, in the home that's, office. Wow, that is a big share yeah. in the office. Yeah. Um, the office, like, the, the environment has has changed over the last three years. We've we spent a lot of time over the last three years really kind of changing the corporate culture yeah. and what the office environment was like. Um, when we were a smaller org, it was it was all sales. It was all sales all day. So very phone room oriented. Yeah. Not quite a boiler room, but mm. close to close, it. Just, yeah. Everybody there was coming in Dialing and pounding phones, right? Yeah. Um, but now with the applications as robust as they are, we have a tech um, team in house, right? We have a VP of engineering now where we didn't have that, you yeah. know, before. Um, we're integrating all these new products and services, and and our customer support has been built up um, as well. We've, you know. I think we're uh, 6x what we were two years ago just on wow. customer support, mm. right? So, um, you know, having everybody in the office, it's, it's building a camaraderie. It's actually people smiling, coming yeah. to the office. And with the technology, like you said, I mean, you know, you're a team's meeting away if you're remote. Yep. How, how um, as, you, as you think about how the, the culture has changed, I wonder how much um, the product or the uh, – the the output of the product has changed so you know in 2008 it was pretty simple yes. where's the car so we can go get it if we need it yep right if uh, single use case but there's so much so such robust data available through mm-hmm. these gps devices now mm-hmm. what kind of ext- you know extension or or orders of magnitude of change have you seen in that i've seen a tremendous amount even just over the last 18 months right really? so um our, our, our manufacturer is Zergo Technologies. Not sure if you guys are familiar with them, um, but we've, we've been partnered with them since 2011. We love their products. We love, we love their organization. Um, mm-hmm. We love the way our teams interact. And what we've seen, and, you know, you referenced our culture, having more people touching the products or, or supporting customers, they're learning things about the product we didn't even know we hmm. had. And when you, when you take that input yeah. and bring it back to either the manufacturer or our team, right yep it's it's sparking creativity we're getting more creative in how we're utilizing the platform and ingest that type of gps or transmitter mm. data all right and then how we're displaying it 
And then you take, you know, we're, we're an Azure cloud shop, right? So our application's in Azure. How do you take those tools inside of there, you know, machine learning, not quite AI, yep. but just taking that information and, and taking that analytical spin to it, right? Where it's not just the dots on the map. It's, right, what it, can you do with those dots? Exactly, yeah. right? So if, if we look at current state, mm -hmm. right? Um, and it is, it is really interesting when y'all spoke about just how far we have come from a, a sensor and asset tracking standpoint. You know, we talked about a few years back when L.L. Bean added a sensor in their jackets and shoes to gather information on when things were worn yeah. and and at what temperatures and stuff. And that, that is absolutely fascinating. So broadening that out mm -hmm. and, and kind of in a little different vein of asset tracking, you've already spoken a lot to kind of the current state, right, where the industry is today. Um, elaborate a little bit more, especially from a transportation, logistics, and supply chain standpoint. What, what does it look like today? Asset tracking. I, I think we're on the backside of the fleet-focused asset tracking. Okay. Where, where, if you look at, um, I'll reference the Driscoll report from last year. All the, right, the Driscoll report. Yes. Okay. Um, Club Driscoll does a, a giant report every year on the state of. Uh, GPS tracking. We need an Ashton report. Someday. We'll get an Ashton report real someday. <laughs> um, I can go back to the Springfield College computer lab <laughs> and fire that right up. <laughs> and use your uh, iPad nowadays. Yeah. Um, 50% 50, 50 of all devices sold last year in the fleet space were renewal based, right? Or okay. or upgraded. Yep. Right? Okay. So 2G, 3G evolution, right? Yeah. So your, your same participant was just swapping out devices. Mm. So that tells me you got a pretty mature marketplace. All right. The yeah, asset it's tracking. A replacement market now. Right. So yeah. the asset tracking side of things is only about 15 to 20% penetration. Okay. All right. So if you, if you start with trailers, so our biggest customer is FedEx Freight. Okay. All right. So we're in the midst of a 24,000 unit deployment with their, with their trailers, with our solar power device. Wow. All right. And our Lana Vision product. All right. And what, what we're starting to see is the, the buy in rate for exploration. And I, I was speaking at a, fireside chat earlier today and we talked about iot and supply chain okay. or asset tracking sure there's there's still very blurred lines there right iot means something a little different to everybody yeah. right? to this day when i hear iot I, I go right to like my nest thermometer mm. the smart home the fridge telling me that you need that's milk where i eggs, go it's right? the fridge <laughs> and, you know so i, I view yeah. iot more consumer centric yep all right but then you walk around here and it's IOT for days, right? Yep. I mean, the technology in here is cool. If, whether you're in machine manufacturing or not, right. the robotics, everything that goes along with it. So when I'm looking at asset tracking now, I'm seeing companies open up to the idea of the sensor integration, mm. all right? And having multiple products or multiple devices and sensors talking to a single platform. So we're spending a majority of our time and development efforts on that platform being capable of ingesting um, data points from a variety of different products, right? So again, core GPS products, mm -hmm. but you know, Bluetooth beacons, LoRa network mm -hmm. communications, right? Or the small sensors. Mm -hmm. We're, I don't see asset tracking to your point with LL Bean. Right. I don't consider that asset tracking. There's that's a form of tracking. Right. More um, consumer focused. More consumer more, focused. Yeah. yeah. But when when you're talking about high value assets, that's right. going to mean something different to everybody. Mm. And where I see the current state is, is people really looking at generators now, portable generators. I don't think five years ago. Probably that was, particularly now. Right. Well, yeah, that, that wasn't considered an asset. It was just our generator. Right. And the cost of doing business was that generator got left on a job mm. site and oh, well, yeah. or it got picked off or whatever the case may be. Yep. Now, not only is the generator being considered an asset, what else can we get out of the generator? If we had a GPS device on mm. it, is there anything we can do from a PID code standpoint? Can we troubleshoot, right? What other information can we get? So yep. runtime all of a sudden, mm. all right? When you're using our products, you can get runtime. So right? it goes well beyond tracking. Correct. Well beyond Correct. just kind of uh, where it, it is. It allows you to understand the the operation and wear and tear of the device yes. to understand this thing's been running for 40 hours and its its service cycle is 80 hours, so it's halfway through its service mm. cycle, 100%, something like that. 100%. And then wow. tie that back to equipment leasing contracts, right? right? Um, you, you got the 
um, you, you rented a bulldozer from Home Depot and you signed a contract that it told you it was 40 hours. Yep. Right? Well, 72 hours later, that guy's at his brother's house with that, you know, dredging the lake in the back. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> drinking a few beers, having fun. Sure, yeah. yeah, yeah. Who doesn't like a podcast? <laughs> yeah, that's all right. All right, so you've already touched on. You mentioned uh, one of your customers earlier in terms of some of the things you're doing together. What other, um, especially for uh, non-asset tracking, which mm-hmm. you know, that phrase doesn't do it justice in terms of what your company does. Non-asset. That, asset yeah, tracking. It's, yeah, it's more what I'm hearing. You, it, the, the um, when I first. You know, as we were prepping for this interview, and, I, and I, I really thought about asset tracking, I was thinking clear, just sheerly location. Where is it, yep. right? You want to prevent mm-hmm. theft. You want to prevent uh, loss. But what I'm hearing you suggest is the operational information you garner from your uh, what you deploy on, on these different units it goes far beyond just asset tracking. Well, but, I mean, o- operational efficiencies and that sort of thing you can do with IoT. You talked about tying it in with IoT, mm-hmm. right? Yes. You start to f- you start to feel vibration in the device. Mm-hmm. You can communicate that back up. Yeah. Right. Hundred percent. And I, I think the biggest thing, and we were talking about your your former ventures, right? Yep. All the planning is great, right? And the you know increased utilization, operational efficiencies. Right. They're not buzzwords, right? Right. But they're used a lot. And I think the biggest thing we're seeing right now is monetization. How am I monetizing my asset? Whether that's a trailer, whether that's a um, a 40-yard right. scrap uh, roll-off container, right? Yeah. All right, or if it's a generator or something along those lines. You got a thou if you got or a bulldozer, which is my favorite. There you go. That's sure. my favorite example. Yeah. If you got 400 hours a week, <laughs> you know, are you fully utilizing that piece of equipment for 400 hours a week? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And what we're seeing is is Companies are still kicking tires on technology. Um, I was at a, a leadership conference, and somebody made a joke from AT&T that the door swung open one day in a tech meeting, and a guy walked in and said, hey, what are we doing with drones delivering pizza operated by blockchain? And the guy, <laughs> and the guy smiled and says, we'll get right on that. Yeah. And the gentleman left the room. They closed the door and said, everybody forget what that guy just yeah. said. Yeah. He clearly was listening to a podcast on his way to the office today. Right. So, you know, the innovation and the technology <laughs> advancements, right, they, they don't need to go zero to a million miles an hour. If you think about just the last 10 years, you know, 10 years ago, you know, where was the iPhone? Yeah. Right. 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 So the leaps you're going to make, per, you know, naturally in the last, you know, in the next year to two years with all this technology and all the sensor integration, that's where I see asset tracking really going. We have a, a, a product that we're in test phases right now, you know, uh, created by Zergo, all right, which we think is going to really change the transportation game when it comes to load recognition and surface volume recognition inside of a trailer, right? Door door opens, immediately takes an image, and gives you a calculation of what the percentage of surface volume is, either full or remaining. So Mm. what do you do with that percentage of surface volume? You estimate whether they've made their first drop or... The, uh, depending on what of, stage of the cycle it is, right? Yeah. So if you're, if, let's just say it's at a dock and someone says, come pick this up. What mm-hmm. if you, instead of sending somebody out there, hitching it and driving it across country, what if you could have pushed a button on an application and saw that it was only 30% full and that load shouldn't have left the dock? Got it. All right. So on that it. note. We need to connect you with somebody we know, by the way. Okay. <laughs> uh, Convoy. So. <laughs> <laughs> so Let's move from current state to future state. So let's talk about, and you've already kind of touched on some of this stuff. Uh, clearly, as an organization, you're already planning kind of for what's next. The industry certainly is, is figuring out how to make better use of uh, modern day and beyond asset tracking for mm-hmm. future deployment applications. What, what, what's a couple of things you think is, is around the corner for, for the asset tracking world? I think it's going to be inside out. Okay. And what I mean by that is, every, again, pointing around here, you have all this manufacturing taking place, right? So you have things coming off conveyor belts. You have these boxes. Where are they inside your facility? When did they leave? Where are they going? Right? So end-to-end tracking solutions. Right now, GPS-focused companies like us, we lose capabilities inside. Right. And depending on what you're, you know, whether it's RFID, whether it's Bluetooth, you know, um, I'm not sure how up to speed you guys are on LoRa networks, 
right? Me, little, none at all. Okay. Bit. Well, th- this is all indoor technology. This gotcha. is the ability to go, you know, track point A to point B inside a facility. Mm. All right. Mm. So which is, I, which is rapidly changing with 5G, as we've talked about in well, previous conversations. And and Bluetooth and IoT devices and things like light fixtures and things like yes. that. Right. Because you need you need three points to triangulate off of. Correct. Mm. And with GPS, it's you know, it's sometimes blocked, and in the t- the taller, or in this case, the deeper underground this building is, mm-hmm. the harder it is for GPS to be accurate. Absolutely. So you yes. have to use other other waypoints to help triangulate. I like that, Greg. Man, you looking for a career? <laughs> Obviously not. <laughs> he waited. He waited till episode three, <laughs> three twenty six. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> to, to, to share some of this stuff, man. It's great. We got we got a spot. Well, for we it. at my last company, we used that because we were tracking the work okay. in a warehouse. Yeah. Uh, or in a tall building, and we had to figure out uh, alternative ways to figure out where you are. And our wor- our device also allowed you to drop a pin and say, the work is over here, empty this trash can. Okay. So we used GPS to whatever extent we could, and then we had to use an amalgamation, yep. as I'm sure you're uh, doing, of different technologies to try to, to triangulate where the worker is and the work was. Yes, right? and that's where I see the future of our company, not so much the industry, but right. our company, and that platform being deep and wide. Inside yeah, out, too. Right? Inside out. Yeah. But we want to be able to communicate with GPS mm-hmm. and the other ancillary technologies that yep. allow you to go inside out versus, okay, great, I can track your trailer, but once it comes off your trailer, I'm out. Right, right? and right? if it, and you, you need to know things like is it on, you know, when it went into the, let's say it went into the Macy's store. Yeah. Right, it, we went into the loading dock. Is it on floor two or floor four or that sort of? Thing? Yep. You can actually find those things out oh, as well, right? Absolutely. So, okay, so that's cool. That is incredibly valuable and applicable to a m- even broader range of yes. applications than you have t- you have right. application to today. And more importantly, it's it it's going to connect the the bigger companies, especially where they they have certain divisions that don't communicate with each other, right? What the, the problem that someone's having on the transportation side is not the same problem that the guy on the manufacturing floor is having. Yep. But if you can solve one for the other, they start communicating. And if you can provide the solution to go inside out, everybody becomes more efficient. Yeah. Mm. Okay. All right. So if we had a device tracking this conversation, this asset, it's going to show a hard right turn because we're going to depart from the world of asset tracking. Okay. And we're going to go broader. Okay. Because I'd love for you, Jason, you, you the, the the supply chain thought leader, the technology thought leader, to weigh in. You know, we we've got a, a global supply in the end supply chain world, technology world, business world mm-hmm. that is rapidly changing minute by minute. <laughs> so, out of all of that noise of developments and, and noise of um, innovation, disruption, pick. You said they weren't cliches, but pick your favorite word there. <laughs> What's one or two things that you track? No, no pun intended. More. Yeah, you know, you're tracking on your radar. Personally this, tracking. Yeah, this, yeah, this is the first things I've had to yeah. make a little yeah, twist on. Yeah. But what 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 are you really from a, a subject matter standpoint or a development standpoint or innovation standpoint? What are you reading and learning and talking about more than others right now? That's a very difficult question. Mm. Um, when when I'm not focused on what we're doing, right? All right. I am tracking the global chain. Right. Um, I'm fascinated by how small the world's become. Yeah. Um, it's still in how technology is connecting everything that we do. Um, so I'm trying to stay current on our different communication methods, um, the, the different communication paths. Um, not only so we're up to speed on what we can integrate with, but just how everybody in the world is interacting. Mm. Um, and that, that's really I, I'm not I'm not very big on the political side of things, right? right? But you have to pay attention to whether it's tariffs and, and where your materials and supplies are coming from. Yeah, right, wha- especially and, now. Right, and what is that impact? And we're all going through it right now with, uh, you know, the COVID-19. And, right. And mm-hmm. um, just so many different operations are being completely shut down. Um, forget about livelihoods, right? It's, it's disrupting everything mm. that we're doing. And if you don't think you're affected by it, you're probably not paying attention. Mm. Mm. Probably not leaving your house. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know. I'll, I'll tell you what. <laughs> you so know. you you were on a um, a panel session earlier today here at Modex. Yes. Is that right? Yep. Um, what fireside was, chat. Fireside, fireside chat. chat. Yeah, so I have a question with, for without you. Was the there? Fire. I was going to ask yeah. if there was actually. Yeah, a I fire. brought marshmallows and was Dog completely disappointed. It. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Who was it? A what was the general theme of the fireside chat? Was it was it you know drill down on asset tracking or was it 
What yeah, was it? it was very specific to asset tracking okay. and, and kind of what we're talking about here. You know, where where have you been? Where are you now? Where are you going? Where's the industry going? Mm. Um, there, it was, you know, those fireside chats, it's, it's, it's one-on-one. Um, mm-hmm. There wasn't a, a ton of questions afterwards um, other than on the advancements of technology and, and some people wanting to know our booth number so they can come over and see what we're doing. Okay, yeah. good. You know, so we've got a little foot traffic from it. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. Um, so you are – good. Please. Just one quick question. Sure. So Do two. you talked about inside the world. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you talked about inside the four walls, but outside the four walls, and there, you, I think we have failed to hit on one keyword here. Okay. Guess what keyword I'm thinking of. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I've been surprised. Blockchain. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, blockchain is, in some cases, a hammer looking for a nail, but there are some – significant applications and i think because of the uh asset-based nature of what you're doing mm-hmm. there is some cost effective capability there are you have you seen any uh buddy around here or anybody that you have engaged with or maybe target where you combine the two technologies of asset tracking and blockchain so i haven't seen anything here yet all right um i haven't walked the show I mean, yeah that's, that's probably right. what tomorrow is going to be for me um, but again, you got to remember, I have a recreation management degree. I'm not the tech guy, right? Um, <laughs> my engineers, my VP of engineering specifically, um, she's very deep in the blockchain right yep. now to see what it could hold for us. I understand the technology. I don't know how we fit into that quite yet. Mm. Um, I, and you're not alone. Well, I think. Well, in well ways. that's that's right. And I, look, let me let me as a political science major, okay, right, yeah. <laughs> tell you which is just a shade below recreational <laughs> science. Uh, <laughs> tell you that uh, here, the, I I think I think of blockchain very simply as this: it's an ear, uh, a, a, an irrefutable record. Yes. Right. So if you think about the handoff, let, let's say your old business case, mm-hmm. a car gets repoed. Yep. It's on somebody's flatbed. Yep. Right, and you know that it's on that flatbed, but the handoff isn't isn't recorded and and isn't um, you know it is maybe recorded, but maybe recorded on paper. Mm-hmm. Right, what all the blockchain does is it creates an immutable record that says, "Hey, Billy Bob dropped it off at Clem Cadiddle Hoppers." Yep, buy here, pay here. You know the Clem. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I've actually bought cars from him. Um, spot, and, and so I could see you. Communicating or facilitating that in some way. I mean, that's I think of blockchain in probably its simplest, um, its simplest application, which is verification of chain of custody. Yeah, that's in the un, uncorruptible nature of that data that's right. is, is what's key. And um, in in the car dealership world, think about all the think about when you go and buy a new car. Think about the mountains of paper that are being printed <laughs> out, yeah. right? In, in, in some cases, still in bubble jet printers, right? Mm. If, if you could do that in blockchain and and yeah. facilitate that chain of custody transaction from the finance company, the bank, through the dealership, mm. through the F and I office, out yeah. the door, and you're leaving without papers, yeah, right, yeah. So that it's a fascinating technology, and I think there's a use case for it in everything that's going around yeah. here. I just don't know. How you fit? I don't there know how yet. we fit. Yeah, honestly, that's a great. That's a very honest answer. Yeah, I like that because, you know, so often, and we just talked about it just a few minutes before we started talking to you. You know, we have people coming as as you described. Are we using drones to blah blah blah? <laughs> this right, pizza. right. <laughs> we have a hammer looking for a nail. Right. Yeah. Let's find a business problem that our our customers or our target prospects are looking to solve mm-hmm. that, that blockchain can integrate with and I, with your technology to solve. And this was a big conversation point in the fireside chat, right? And I, I refer to it as kicking tires, right? Because we were talking about sales situations. Mm. And, and, you know, where, where we see the challenges still is there's a difference between a company that reaches out to you for whatever reasons and says, we're investigating this type of technology. Mm-hmm. What do you want to use it for? We're not sure yet. We want to see what you have mm-hmm. to offer. Versus the company that sat down and said, hey, we have a problem. Here is the problem. Yep, yep. What technologies can we use to solve the problem? So that yep. conversation always yields a better, you know, I agree. a better commitment to solving a problem versus kicking tires on technology. Yeah. Solution first, yep. right? Yeah. All right. So for uh, clearly you're going to be talking with uh, 
business leaders and prospective customers, maybe even current customers while you're here in Atlanta with Modex, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I can picture your booth being swarmed as we speak, Jason. Um, but if we uh, should have a live cam as we're interviewing yeah. people to see if their booth is being swarmed. yeah they're all taking numbers wa- waiting on Jason while we're talking to them that that camera just caught my face going really <laughs> you think it's swarmed I don't think so <laughs> um, well after they hear this though after they hear <laughs> yeah, this yeah but uh, for folks that aren't here at Modex and especially when this podcast uh, gets published how can folks learn more and connect yeah. connect with you first and then how can they also connect with the company. Um, connecting with the company, I'll go backwards. Yeah. Um, so call pass now is the URL. So www.callpassnow.com. Dot com. Yep. All right. Um, you can reach me um, on LinkedIn, Jason Ashton. Um, my email address is Jason A at CPM, the number two M dot com. Super complicated. Yeah. Um, I believe I have a Twitter handle. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know what it is. Marketing <laughs> handles that for me. Well, you've got a company Twitter. Call, uh, it says at call pass underscore CO. Yes. Aaron's going to get very mad at me. Yeah. Uh, well, you she's know what? probably listening now. And That's okay. We got it out there. Okay. So yeah. tell her to back off. Okay. <laughs> and we'll also, we'll, we'll, so when we publish this episode, yeah. like we do with all of our guests, because we yeah, want to yeah, make yeah, it we'll as easy as possible, there. you know, uh, it's really important when folks come on here. We've done our homework, and we, we want to share this thought leadership and the cool things these companies are doing with our audience and, yep. and industry. So we make it really easy. We'll, we'll tag you all on social media. Awesome. We'll include some of these links in, their, in the episode digest, including this uh, report you mentioned earlier. I got a, a new one for me. The uh, report you mentioned. Driscoll. The Driscoll report. Driscoll report. That's a yep. new one for me. So we'll, we'll look, at, look that up, too. Um, and then you all also on LinkedIn, I imagine, like most successful, thriving tech firms, mm-hmm. you're probably hiring. Yep. Uh, folks can learn more at li- on the LinkedIn page, call pass uh, dash M2M dash solutions, which is the easy way to find your company page on LinkedIn, I believe. It doesn't sound easy. Well, you know, <laughs> <laughs> we, you, should, we should do better. Usually Greg's you know a what? difficult yeah, one on this show. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's a discussion between you and your marketing right. folks. I don't think we should have that here. Hey, we got, we got a love old Aaron. Uh, you know, clearly... Clearly, the team. Um, I think you're t- from what I heard today, uh, in, in some of our pre-show conversations, you know, you you can boil this down into a, a non-technical uh, conversation, and yep. that is so critical, especially in these days where folks get two minutes to learn about something and figure mm-hmm. out if they're going to engage, whether it's Modex or whether it's just business in you know yeah. in general, mm-hmm. especially this this ever well, being disrupted. And if you if you take a look at our you know. You've, you've spoken with Aaron. Aaron does a phenomenal job for us, and she's been so integral in, in shaping the message we have and taking that message and making it easy to consume. Yep. Right? Um, so our materials are easy to ingest. You understand what we're doing just by looking at something. Um, so it doesn't get into that what exactly is this tech. Yeah. It's okay. This makes a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. That's okay. That's critical these days. Really have enjoyed talking with Jason Ashton, president uh, at Call Pass. You can learn more at callpassnow.com. The pride, Jason is, the pride of Naugatuck, Can- uh, Connecticut. Yes. I almost put Canada there. No, no, Connecticut. Naugatuck, Connecticut. Connecticut. I don't want anyone coming and after now, you, Jason. Tampa, Florida. Yes. Right? Yes, that's right. Um, so thanks for your time, Jason. Yes, I really thank enjoyed you. it. Thank you. Yeah, really appreciate great. you sharing you know, a lot of what you are doing uh, from an innovative standpoint. And some stuff that you shared in the Fireside Chat. I think our listeners get kind of a um, a two-for-one here. Um, So this continues our coverage of Modex 2020. No shortage of of intriguing conversations, right? It it is fascinating what companies are doing out there and how how many different approaches there are. I mean, it it seems like sometimes it's just a a minuscule different viewpoint on Mm. supply chain opens up an entirely new area. Mm. It also, yeah, it seems like there's a circus ride behind us. <laughs> well, Don't sir, worry. It, it, it's very secure. It's very so, secure. So Jason, you're the first <laughs> guest that's actually res- responded and reacted. I, I've been waiting <laughs> on one to do it. So for our listeners uh, that can are checking out the YouTube episode, you just noticed right over, just on the other side of our mobile studio, we've got what really amounts to a supply chain fair yes. ride. <laughs> we need to take a video yes, and include and it in the show yeah, notes that's of right. all of our all of our shows. You're right. But yeah, uh, they're yeah. doing good work awesome. over at Wolf Tech over there, yeah. and impressing the crowd, just selling popcorn, I bet. Um, all right. So to our audience, I uh, hope you've enjoyed our conversation with Jason yeah. Ashton with Call Pass as much as we have. Uh, you'll have plenty of information on them on the episode page. But 
In other news, check out what else we've got coming up on our events and webinar tab at supplychainradio.com. Variety of in-person and more and more virtual and more events. More virtual events, yeah. Uh, AIAG is going to be virtual. Uh, we well, they're, that's right. Their CSR uh, right. event, corporate right. and social responsibility event in April, w- is looking to be virtual. Uh, you know, the association landscape, they're trying to figure out how to deliver to thought leadership like we're doing here. But without the, some of the physical risks that um, you know, folks are still trying to battle back. But we will continue on, yep. right? EFT Reuters events. We have Automotive Industry Action Group uh, stuff coming up. Georgia Logistics Summit, which has been moved. Um, and then, of course, uh, our Stand Up and Sound Off event. Which is virtual. Which is another so virtual event. So the show goes on no matter where you That's are. Right. That's right. So Learn more at supplychainnowradio.com. Okay. Um, also, if, you, if there's something there Not or gone. if there's not something there that uh, you're expecting to find and can't find it, shoot our CMO uh, email, and that's amanda at supplychainnowradio.com. We will serve as a resource for you. Or if you're at Modex, just tap her on the shoulder because she's standing <laughs> she's right, right over there. <laughs> she might have some hand <laughs> sanitizer for you. Yeah, there uh, you go. Once again, big thanks to Jason Ashton, president of Call Pass, here today. Really enjoyed it. Uh, to our audience, this this uh, concludes this episode. Stay tuned for the rest of our coverage here at Modex 2020. Again, you can check out our other upcoming events, replays of our interviews, other resources at supplychainnowradio.com. Find us and subscribe wherever you get your podcast from. On behalf of Greg White, this is Scott Luton wishing you a wonderful week ahead, and we will see you next time on Supply Chain Now. <laughs>